If it's raining during winter, you're drenched completely before you get into town. And like if you're carrying a backpack or something, unless it's waterproof, everything inside gets wet. I've had to fry out a lot of stuff before. This is Jacob Foster's morning commute. The journey can be gruelling. I'll have to look at the timetables once I do eventually get in and just wait for the time to get in, come back, walk back. Otherwise, I just have to call up a taxi. The 20 year old lives out the back of La Trobe in Tasmania's northwest. He's desperate for a job, but getting into the city of Devonport to find one is a daily challenge. He often gets a taxi, but the easier way comes at a cost. Too expensive. I have bills to pay and stuff, so $6 is a lot when it comes to just going into town and back. Karina Cowling is helping Jacob find work, but without a licence, it's proving challenging. She says about 80% of her clients are in the same boat. Just working on getting a licence in general is hard for youth out there, so, and if you have no supports in place, that makes it even harder. But yeah, it's one of the main factors of um, getting a job. In Tasmania's northwest, facilities and services are spread out across the entire region. Socioeconomic disadvantage is higher than other parts of the state, and a lot of people live outside the major centres. The region is connected by buses, but many in the community say services aren't good enough. They've known that they've needed support, mm. but then when they can't access that yeah, regularly, yeah. then they feel more socially isolated sure. as well. The buses Damien Collins has spent decades working as a counsellor across the northwest. He and his team see the impact of transport difficulties every day, especially for young people. If you're from Sheffield, if you're from Yola, um, there's not a lot of services that are available to you and if your family doesn't have the means to support you to get to those services, then they're essentially unattainable to you and you might not even be aware that they're out there. He says people are suffering with poor mental health because once they get the courage to seek help, the bus system can't get them to appointments. You know, a lot of young people and you know, fully grown adults will say it's, it's non-existent for the better part. Um, when you look at maybe having to spend two and a half to three hours on buses for a half hour appointment, it's very hard for the average human to justify, oh, that's a good use of my time. Bus networks are managed by the Department of State Growth. In a 2017 review of bus services in Devonport, it found overall boardings were low and the vast majority of households in the area owned at least one car. That said, it also found that of people who did take the bus, 74% said they did so because they didn't have a car or a licence. That means that while overall bus use remains low, those who do get on board are completely reliant on it to get to work, appointments and social engagements. Don Jones was a magistrate on the coast for 20 years. During his time on the bench, he saw people breaking the law out of desperation. One young fellow who um, had an apprenticeship and he lost his licence, he said, I'm going to lose my job. I said, well, sadly, I can't go below that minimum penalty. You must accept it. Now, he appeared probably about three or four months later. He was trying to complete his apprenticeship. He says the lack of public transport encourages re-offending. Many lose their licences because of alcohol uh, and of course you've got the uh, immediate disqualification for a first offence. They're often young, they get tempted to think okay I'll drive because I can't get a bus. So it just leads to further breaches of the law. Seatbelt, seatbelts, yep, well done. Okay. Yep, fits on the brake and then yep. what's, yep. And it's your first night driving, yay. Not all people struggling to drive have found themselves on the wrong side of the law. Some, like 17-year-old Ashley Abel, live independently. It wasn't the best home life, so it was the best option for me at the time and still is to this day. She's getting driving lessons through the Easy Peas program to log her 80 hours. Volunteers pair up with learner drivers to go for free weekly sessions. It's in such high demand, it's got a waiting list. It would take a really long time without it. There's just 
with this, it, the program, it's consistent. So like every week we go out for driving. Um, if without it, it would probably be like once every three months or something like that. So I work with young people in my job and I see every day that so many of them, that's a, a huge barrier to find and work, to being able to socialize, to be able to get out and connect with, you know, their community. So just thought, oh, that's something easy that I can do to give back to the community. Kalisha Ivory has completely turned her life around in the last year. Part of that came with getting her licence through the program. She fought hard to learn to drive, often making incredible sacrifices. The second time I failed, I burst into tears. I thought I was going to get it, and I gambled my grocery money on it. If it wasn't for mission, reimbursing me for not passing my licence, I would not have been able to feed my kid that week. At 26, Kalisha's got her first job and her freedom. Now I can go grocery shopping because I can get my groceries home. Like, there's so much less stress I have to worry about. I know I can, you know, take my child to the ER in the middle of the night if I need to, and I had to. And like so many trying to steer their lives in the right direction, it's the little things that make the biggest difference. I still remember the first day I picked her up from daycare. Oh my God, it's mummy's car. There was no one else. It was just me and her by ourselves. And that was the best gift. It made the three years of struggling to get my peas worth it just driving home that day.